Hey everybody, this is Mr. Gus Holes, Chapter 5. There were six large gray tents, and each one had a black letter on it. A, B, C, D, E, or F. The first five tents were for the campers. The counselor slept in F. Stanley was assigned to D tent. Mr. Pendansky was his counselor. My name's easy to remember, said Mr. Pendansky as he shook hands with Stanley outside the tent. Three easy words, pen, dance, ski. Mr. Sir returned to the office. Mr. Pendansky was younger than Mr. Sir and not nearly as scary looking. The top of his head was shaved so close that it was almost bald, but his face was covered with a thick curly black beard. His nose was badly sunburned. Mr. Sir isn't so bad, said Mr. Pendansky. He's just been in a bad mood ever since he quit smoking. The person you've got to worry about is the warden. There's really only one rule at Camp Green Lake. Don't upset the warden. Stanley nodded as if he understood. I want, uh, I want you to know, Stanley, that I respect you, Mr. Pendansky said. I understand that you've made some bad mistakes in your life. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. But everyone makes mistakes. You may have done some bad things, but that doesn't make you a bad kid. Stanley nodded. It seemed pointless to try to tell his counselor that he was innocent. He figured that everyone probably said that. He didn't want Mr. Pendansky to think that he had a bad attitude. I'm going to help you to turn your life around, said his counselor, but you're going to have to help too. Can I count on your help? Yes, sir, Stanley said. Mr. Pendansky, Mr. Pendansky said good and patted Stanley on the back. Two boys, each carrying a shovel, were coming across the compound. Mr. Pendansky called to them, Rex, Alan, I want you to come and say hello to Stanley. He's the newest member of our team. The boys glanced wearily. It means they're tired at Stanley. They were dripping with sweat, and their faces were so dirty that it took Stanley a moment to notice that one kid was white and the other was black. What happened to Barfbag? asked the black kid. Lewis is still in the hospital, said Mr. Pendansky. He won't be returning. He told the boys to come shake Stanley's hand and introduce themselves like gentlemen. Hi, the white kid grunted. That's Alan, said Mr. Pendansky. My name's not Alan, the boy said. It's Squid, and that's X-Ray. Hey, said X-Ray. He smiled and shook Stanley's hand. He wore glasses, but they were so dirty that Stanley wondered how he could see out of them. Mr. Pendansky told Alan to go to the rec hall and bring the other boys to meet Stanley. Then he led them inside the tent. There were seven cots, each one less than two feet from the one next to it. Which was Lewis's cot? Mr. Pendansky asked. Barf bag slept there, said X-Ray, kicking one of the beds. All right, Stanley, that'll be yours, said Mr. Pendansky. Stanley looked at the cot and nodded. He wasn't particularly thrilled about sleeping in the same cot that had been used by somebody named Barfbag. Seven crates were stacked in two piles on one side of the tent. The open end of the crates faced outward. Stanley put his backpack, change of clothes, and towel in what used to be Barfbag's crate. It was at the bottom of the stack and ha that had three in it. Squid returned with four other boys. The first three were introduced by Mr. Pendansky as Jose, Theodore, and Ricky. They called themselves Magnet, Armpit, and Zigzag. They all, had, they all have nicknames, explained Mr. Pendansky. However, I prefer to use the names their parents gave them, the names that society will recognize them by when they return to become useful and hardworking members of society. It ain't just a nickname, X-Ray told Mr. Pendansky. He tapped the rim of his glasses. I can see inside you, Mom. You've got a big, fat heart. The last boy either didn't have a name or else he didn't have a nickname. Both Mr. Pendansky and X-Ray called him Zero. You know why his name's Zero? asked Mr. Pendansky. Because there's nothing inside his head. He smiled and playfully shook the Zero shoulders. Zero said nothing. And that's mom, a boy said. Mr. Pendansky smiled at him. If it makes you feel better to call me mom, Theodore, go ahead, go ahead and call me mom. He turned to Stanley. If you have questions, Theodore will help you. You got that, Theodore? I'm dependent on you. Theodore spit a thin line, line of saliva between his teeth, causing some of the other boys to complain about the need to keep their home sanitary. 
You were all new here once, said Mr. Pendansky, and you all know what it feels like. I'm counting on every one of you to help Stanley. Stanley looked at the ground. Mr. Pendansky left the tent, and soon the other boys began to file out as well, like leave, taking their towels and change of clothes with them. Stanley was relieved to be left alone, but he was so thirsty he felt as if he would die if he didn't get something to drink soon. Hey, uh, Theodore, he said, going after him. Do you know where I can fill my canteen? Theodore whirled and grabbed Stanley by his collar. My name's not Theodore, he said. It's Armpit. He threw Stanley to the ground. Stanley stared up at him, terrified. There's a water spigot on the wall of the shower stall. Thanks, Armpit, said Stanley. As he watched the boy turn and walk away, he couldn't for the life of him figure out why anyone would want to be called Armpit. In a way, it made him feel a little better about having to sleep in a cot that used to be named Barb, or what used to, I'm sorry. In a way, it made him feel better about having to sleep in a cot that had been used by somebody named Barb Bag. Maybe it was a term of respect.